Mary Ann Glendon is one of the leading lights in the religious liberty space. She's a scholar, an advocate, a mentor, and a champion of religious liberty. She's really one of the great intellects of our time who has decided to make this one of her signature issues. In fact, it's hard to even imagine the discussion without her. She's played such a central role. She has gone to the root of the questions of religious liberty in a way that are applicable to all faiths and to all peoples. I love this picture. Christmas 1943, which means I was five years old, and my Christmas present that year was a desk and a typewriter. My whole life was forecast right there. A desk and a typewriter. Marianne was raised in a small town of Western Massachusetts called Dalton. Uh, religious communities living in close proximity to each other, a very thick civic and social life there. I was able to see firsthand a number of things that I took for granted. One is that diverse groups can achieve a tolerant community. She reminded people that you can't think well about religious freedom unless you think about people in communities. There's a temptation that governments have to make religious institutions operate just like government ones and to water down their distinctiveness, to water down their religious character. Because Marianne always emphasized that religious freedom has this communitarian and institutional dimension, she could push back on that. She is quick to call our attention to the fact that rights are only one part of the equation. There are also countervailing responsibilities and duties and obligations that travel together with those rights. And that people are not simply isolated wills. They are, in fact, relational beings who flourish and live and require community for that. I think there's a uh, very uh, useful analogy to be made between the protection of our social environments and the protection of the natural environment. We are aware that we have to guard our natural resources, but we have social resources that our founders told us were more necessary to our unique democratic experiment than to any other form of government. Our form of government requires citizens with a certain degree of character and competence, what some people call civic virtues. And if those seed beds of civic virtues, among which are religious groups, institutions, families, if those seed beds dry up, then the polity itself is in danger. Most people are really excited to have one important career, and, and she could have simply rested on our laurels as a comparatist and been an iconic figure in American law and jurisprudence. But instead, she went beyond that and became a diplomat and served our country on domestic and international questions connected to religious freedom. Marianne has the, the characteristics that you need in a great diplomat. Intelligent, great judgment, but also um, in addition to being somebody that people are attracted to, a kind of toughness that sometimes has to come with a diplomatic post. She has sacrificed of herself and worked so hard, so tirelessly, and so intelligently on behalf of religious freedom, making nations stronger by increasing their religious tolerance, and most importantly, by increasing the total amount of human dignity in the world. When you get a woman of such scholarship and calmness and serenity, joy and friendship, they would say, well, maybe that side's worth listening to. And to me, in her defense of religious freedom and her defense of human life, that's where she's particularly effective. She has this backbone of steel when it comes to standing up for important principles, for people, for what she believes in. She showed that very clearly, for example, at the Beijing Conference of Women when she was the first female diplomatic representative of the Holy See in the modern era. I was terrified when I went to Beijing. <laughs> I was really very worried uh, about being in that situation and having so much responsibility. And um, when I got up, 
to the podium. All of a sudden, I cannot explain it, but suddenly the fear went out of me and I felt very comfortable. And that sense of comfort has stayed with me ever since the Beijing conference. I came to have uh, comfort in those situations that once had been very uncomfortable for me, but I don't take any credit for it at all. I just feel fortunate that uh, the, the discomfort went away and I thank the Lord for it. But I lived 55 years of my life before that happened. National Bioethics Council together. Professor Glendon is a beloved teacher. Uh, she's beloved by her official students, those who to whom she's a, a, awarded grades, <laughs> but also to people like myself, uh, who never had the privilege and honor of sitting in her classroom, but who are nevertheless her students. She has been a visionary, not just in her writing uh, and her teaching, but also in her mentoring and that exponential impact that she's had on the field of religious liberty. Mary Ann took an interest in me and in my career when I was a young attorney. I did take a class from Professor Glendon. I was her research assistant for the entire three years that I was there. I never actually had a class with Mary Ann Glendon, but I feel like she taught me more than, than any law professor uh, in my classes did. Mary Ann was my uh, first law professor in law school. In my second year of law school, I took a seminar with her. Uh, it was really a turning point for me. She became very important to me in thinking about my life's vocation. It's an informal network, but uh, you know, when you share your experience with others, um, you really see, wow, this is something that is not unique to me. It's something that is shared by so many. My hope is that her contribution to religious liberty really isn't one person. It's all the people touched by her who now go out and carry that idea forward. And that she is able to show that at the root of all that is a woman of faith. Boy, oh boy, that's what I think Pope St. John Paul II meant when he spoke about an integrated humanism, soul, mind, heart, emotions, body, reason, faith, all come together, not in separate parts, but in a beautiful choreography. And when you see that, you get, you get a scholar, you get a prophet, and I use that word purposefully, like Mary Ann Glendon. I like to think of myself as a link in a very long chain, a chain that extends from the people who raised me and taught me, the people who raised and taught them, uh, through me to my children and the friends and students and people that uh, I've come in contact with. I like to think that whatever little I've been able to contribute becomes part of a common patrimony.